It was Palm Sunday, and the family was up getting ready for church, and little Sammy, Sammy was five years old, he woke up that morning, he had a little sore throat, he had a, just a tiny little fever, and mom thought it was probably best to keep Sammy at home that day, so she stayed home with Sammy. Dad took the two older sisters and headed off to, headed off to church. When they came home after church, they found Sammy sitting there on the, on the couch watching TV. He had his little sippy cup with him. And, and the sisters walked in waving their palm branches. And he said, what's that about? Where'd you get, the, where'd you get those palm branches? And, they, and his dad explained to him, well, when Jesus came in, everybody waved the palm branches to welcome him. And Sammy said, that just figures. One day I don't show up. And Jesus makes it to church. Well, that's that one day today. It's that one day, the one day we wave the palms, the one day we sing the hosannas, the one day we welcome Jesus in. Palm Sunday kicks off our celebration of Holy Week, leading us up to Easter. You know, so much of the celebration and really the remembrance of Easter is designed to put us in the experience. It's designed to to help us to be there with Jesus. Uh, On Thursday night, we'll gather here and we will celebrate the Lord's Supper just as they did in the upper room. On Friday evening, we'll be at the Presbyterian Church and we will read those passages about the crucifixion. We will sing songs that put us there. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? We'll leave in silence and we'll leave in darkness putting us there in that moment. Easter Sunday, we'll gather at the Methodist Church for sunrise service. We'll gather and we will, we will welcome the risen Christ. We will shout, He is risen! He is risen indeed! What about Palm Sunday? What about this event, this triumphal entry? Where do we find our place in this story? We're going to be in Luke chapter 19 today, beginning in verse 28, Luke 19. It's page 878 in those blue Bibles in front of you. It's that familiar story, just as I read earlier, Matthew's account. Luke tells the story this way, Luke 19, beginning in verse 28. And when he, that is Jesus, had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem, when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village in front of you, and where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near already on his way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice with all the mighty, for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. We read that story. And sometimes we choose to identify with Jesus. or We choose to identify with Jesus' disciples. Excuse me. The disciples flanking Jesus as he rode that colt, that donkey, into Jerusalem. But we realize that those same disciples by Friday, those disciples will scatter. They will abandon him. Peter will deny even knowing him. I don't think we want to be in that position. Sometimes we, we read this story and we identify with the crowd, the crowd that is waving the palms, the crowd that is shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that term, the crowd, is going to be used again on Friday when they put Jesus on trial. It is a crowd that will shout, crucify him. I don't think we want to be identified with the crowd. So where do we relate 
in this story? Where do we find our identity? Where do we find ourselves in this remembrance? I, I don't think we find ourselves as the disciples. I don't think we find ourselves with the crowd. I think we identify with the donkey. Uh, some of you are saying, did, did he just call us what I think he called us? Yes. Yes, I did. And some of you wives are saying, he, he got that one right. And I was like, no, that, don't go there, Donna. That's not nice. But the animal was chosen just as you have been chosen. Uh, the animal was valuable just as you are valuable. And this animal is a reminder of the truth that you and I need to understand about ourselves. And the truth is this, it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about the one we carry. There are two things that are said of this donkey that are also applied to you and me. And first of all, Jesus told the disciples that if anyone were to ask what they were doing, they were to say, the Lord has need of it. And in the same way, the Lord has need of it of you. I've been thinking a lot about mom this past week. This past Tuesday marked six years since her funeral right here in this building. Six years without mom. And I can tell you that I occasionally still think to myself, I need to give her a call. And then I realize I can't. And a question will pop in my head and I think, well, I'll ask mom. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. And there are times when I can still hear her voice. Oh, the times when I can hear her voice. <laughs> Yesterday morning, I was driving to Paris over to Brad's Florist to, to pick up our palm branches, and I drove by, I was driving along, and I was, got to the Conlog Road, and then there's that pasture just past the Conlog Road. Uncle Ronnie knows what I'm going to say. Because you get past that, you get past the Conlog Road, you come up to that pasture, and mom would say, There's that donkey. And I drove by and I heard in my head, there's that donkey. Every time you drove by that pasture, there's that donkey. And I would say, Mom, that donkey's always there. Well, it wasn't there the other day. <laughs> well, the donkey, someone needed it, I guess. He had to be someplace else. The donkey had an appointment or something. But every time you drove by, there's that donkey. Jesus needs a donkey. He sends two of his disciples. We don't know who they are, by the way, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell us he sends two disciples. They don't get named. I kind of think, I don't know. It's probably Nathaniel or somebody. But two disciples, they get donkey duty. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to be known as the guy who got donkey duty, right? No one's going to listen to you preach. If you're, I got donkey duty. But two of the disciples get donkey duty and they go into the city and they, and they see the post and they see it and then, you know what they said? There's that donkey. Just like mom. There's that donkey. Just like Jesus said, there it is. But I, I wonder why. Why was the donkey there? Somebody tied that donkey to that spot. Why did they put that donkey in that spot? Now, it could be that they left that donkey there because there was a little patch of grass. So they thought, well, that'll be nice for him. He can, he can eat that or he can lay down on it. Maybe there was a tree. And they thought, you know, it's a nice and shady spot for a donkey. If I was a donkey, I'd want to be in this spot. But they, they left that donkey in that spot. But what they didn't know, no matter what their reasoning was, what they didn't know is God had a purpose for them putting that donkey where it was. God was working through those choices. God had a plan for them putting that donkey where they did. The Lord has need of that donkey. And when they went to find it, they found it right there. They found it ready to be used. The Lord has need of you. And long, long before you realized it, He put you where He needed you to fulfill His plan for you. But one of the things that had to be done first before that donkey could be used, that donkey had to be untied. You know, he tells us that in verse 30. He says, go into the village in front of you and on entering it, you'll find the colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say to them, the Lord has need of it. As long as that donkey was tied to that spot, it could not be used by Jesus. Think about that. God 
arranged for that donkey to be there. God had plans for that donkey. Jesus needed a donkey, but as long as it was tied to that spot, Jesus could not use that donkey. There's a lesson for us there. The Lord has need of you. He has prepared something for you long before you ever knew Him. But we need to take a long, hard look at what is it that we are tied to. What have we attached ourselves to? What is it that's tying us down? What is it that's keeping us rooted in spot, tying us down, holding us back, and keeping us from being used? You know, we can tie ourselves to just about anything. Sometimes we tie ourselves to other people. We get in relationships or we get in, in situations where, where someone else tells us where we need to be and what we need to be doing. We get into relationships that keep us from being used. Sometimes we tie ourselves to addictions, don't we? We tie ourselves to either a substance or sometimes it's a mentality. I mean, we, it's not just about alcohol and things that we can abuse in that way. Sometimes we're addicted to... Sometimes we're addicted to personality. Sometimes we're addicted to, to gossip. Sometimes we're addicted to some horrible, horrible things. We can be addicted to a bad attitude. Or we can be addicted to a, to a wrong belief. And sometimes we even tie ourselves to something good. We tie ourselves to something useful. But we end up getting pulled in so many different directions uh, that, that we never know exactly what we ought to be doing. The problem is we, we might even find security and comfort and we might even find our own kind of usefulness in those things that we've tied ourselves to. But we have to evaluate, is this what God wants to use me for or is this holding me back? Is it keeping me from being useful? The author of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. He's talking about those people that you've known and people you've loved, people who've gone before us, people you know who by their faith, they put themselves in positions where God can use them. I can't help but think of several faces and several personalities that I've known over the years, many of whom have been part of our church and part of our community. But he says, therefore, since we're surrounded by that great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside everything, every weight, every sin which clings so closely, and let us run Run with endurance the race that is set before us. We can't run if we're tied down to something. And he doesn't just talk about sin. He says everything that, uh, every weight, everything that clings so closely, everything that holds us back from the Lord. There's some tough calls we have to make every now and then. We have to stop and ask, what is it I need to let go of? What is it that's holding me back? But long before you were tied to whatever that thing is, the Lord put you there. The Lord had need, has need of you. Make sure you never lose sight of that. Make sure you are ready for Him to use you. Yeah, you and I are like that donkey. The Lord has need of us. But, but to what purpose? The purpose of that donkey was to carry Jesus into Jerusalem. And in the same way, you bring the presence of Jesus to the people around you. You bring the presence of Jesus to the people around you. I think about Palm Sunday from that donkey's perspective. What a weird day it must have been for that little donkey. What a strange and confusing day to be that little donkey. First of all, they put a guy on his back. That's never happened before. No one's ever ridden him before. It also says he was a colt. Now, I don't know much about donkeys. I really need to pay more attention when I'm driving down there on the Conlog Road. But a little colt, how small was this thing? Did, did Jesus' feet dangle or did they drag when he rode the donkey? You ever think about that? I, I think about that. Was Jesus' feet dragging as he... Well, mine would be if I was riding that one, but you know, was Jesus' feet dragging as he, as he rode this little donkey? And then they lead him into the city. I don't know if he's ever been in the city. Surely he's not been in the city with this much activity. And there's all these people shouting and yelling. And, and that's got to be exciting. And then all these people start taking their cloaks and their palm branches. And they're throwing them down. And, and suddenly he's walking on cloaks. And he's walking on palm branches. And the little donkey's thinking, oh, this feels so good. You know, and nice and soft on my feet. And other people are waving the palm branches. And, and he's feeling the breeze from that. Doesn't that feel good when you wave the palm branch? And you feel the breeze? Like, oh man, that, that, that feels so good. And, and at some point, he must have thought to himself, I, I am a really special donkey. That's, you know, 
I'm, you know what? Someone on the internet is just going to lift me saying that out of this and take it completely out of context. So let me do it again for them. I am a very special donkey. There, make it easier for them. But you know what? It, it, it wasn't about the donkey. It was about who he carried. And in the same way, it's not about us. It's about the one we carry. Look again at verse 35. And they brought it to Jesus. They brought the donkey to Jesus, throwing their cloaks on the colt. They set Jesus on it. There is one scripture that you and I go back to over and over again. We've gone back to it for over 20 years now. John chapter 12, verse 32, where Jesus says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all people to Him. He's talking about the cross. And it's a reminder to us that in, in lifting Christ up on that cross, He was drawing all people. He was, he was calling everyone to come follow Him. But I think about Jesus being lifted up on that donkey. People were drawn to Jesus. And the lesson for us is if we lift Him up, we, as we lift Him up, we carry His presence to the people around us. It always amazes me as you follow Jesus on this journey through Luke's Gospel because ten chapters earlier in Luke chapter 9, it's Luke chapter 9 where Jesus, where, where Luke says of Jesus, He set His face to go to Jerusalem. Luke chapter 9, He set His face to go to Jerusalem. And for ten chapters, Jesus has walked to Jerusalem. He has walked through people's lives. He has walked along and healed people. He has walked along and taught. He has walked along and told parables. But all this time, He has walked through on His way to Jerusalem. But, but it's a donkey. It's a little donkey that gets Him there. It's a little donkey that carries Him into town. You know, there are places in our community where Jesus needs to go. There are people in your life, people that you know, people in our community who need to know Jesus. There are people who need to to connect. People you know who need to connect with His compassion. There are people you know who need to know His love, who who, who need to know His forgiveness, who need His presence in their lives and in their struggles. How's He going to get there? You're going to carry Him into their lives. There are people in your life There are people in our neighborhood. There are people in our sphere of influence, our our sphere of friendship, who are looking for Jesus. How are they going to find Him? Where are they going to look for Him? Where are they going to see Him? I mean, God help them if God help them if they go looking at the media, right? You God help them if they go if they go look in the media, either TV or, or 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 social media of all places. Because boy, the people that get there, the Christians who get their names out there, their faces out there, the Christians who who go out there and say things, they can say some really stupid things. God help them if they go there looking. God help them if they go to politicians looking for Jesus. Politicians who, who, who corrupt His message. Politicians who use Jesus to win elections. To use Jesus to further their agendas. To line their own pockets. But they shouldn't be going to those big places anyway to find Jesus. They should be looking at us. They should be looking at their neighbors. They should be looking at their friends. The people who care about them. Who also love Jesus. Who carry His presence to them. And where... When you, are, when you do that, when you do that, you enable other people to praise Him. Look again at verse 37. As He was drawing near already on the way down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of His disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice saying the, for, for all the mighty works that they had seen. I like how Matthew puts it there in Matthew 21, verse 9. The crowds that went before Him, the crowds that followed Him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Was it about the donkey? No. It was about the one He carried. But they couldn't have praised Him without the donkey. They wouldn't have noticed Jesus if He was just another guy walking into Jerusalem that day. They wouldn't have noticed Him. And in the same way, there are people in your life who are desperate, desperate in their need to know Jesus as their Savior, their Lord, their friend, the One who forgives them, the One who cares for them. They need you to carry Him to them, to lift Him up, to give them an opportunity to praise Him. It's not about about you. It's about the One you carry. And you know, all along this walk, 
to Jerusalem. The Pharisees have been there. The Pharisees have been muttering and grumbling. I mean, they're having a great time watching all the people. And of course, they're here in Jerusalem too. They see Jesus, they see the donkey, they hear the crowd, and they hear the crowd's reaction. And the Pharisees say, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Rebuke them because they've called Jesus the king. They've recognized his majesty and his authority. And Jesus answers the Pharisees and he says, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. You see, here's the thing. One way or another, Jesus is going to be praised. One way or another, Jesus is going to be known as Lord. Now that is both glorious to me, and it is also terrifying. Because there are people in your life who don't know Him. Who don't believe in Him. Who will not acknowledge Him. Who do not acknowledge Him. Will not acknowledge Him, but they will one day. Romans chapter 14, verse 11 looks ahead to that day of judgment and it says, As I live, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. You know, a day will come when there is no excuse, when there is no ignorance, when there is no denying who Jesus is and they will cry out. Creation, all of creation, stones and everything will cry out. But for many, it's going to be too late. And so for now, it's just you and me We're like that donkey. It's not about us. It's about the one we carry. It's about recognizing that the Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of us. Let's make sure we're ready for Him. That we're not tied to anything that would hold us back, that would keep us from being used. That would keep us from carrying Him to those who need Him to be in their lives, to be in the lives of people that we love so that they can recognize Him, so they can praise Him so they can give their lives to Him. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing a song. We'll take the Lord's Supper together. Would you pray with me? (laughs) Father, Father, uh, we are more than happy to be compared to donkeys today. We are more than, and it's more than fair. We, we recognize our stubbornness. We recognize our own foolishness. We recognize those times when, well, when, when we've, just, we've just made ourselves look like, <laughs> like donkeys. And yet you find us useful. You find us valuable. And you place in our hearts and in our, in our character and in our love, you place the love of Jesus. And we thank you for that gift. Or that's not for us. That's not so that we'll feel good about ourselves. That's not so that other people here would just think that we're, that, that we're so godly and so close. That's so our world, so our friends, so the people out there, so the people that we love, so that the people, so the people who frustrate us, so the people who challenge us, so the people who, who want to tie us to other things so that they will see Your glory, so that they will know His love, and so they will see Jesus. So Lord, we take today this bread, this cup, that reminds us of His presence, of His gift and His presence with us today. And Father, we don't just take this in, but we take Him with us. We carry Him with us so that our world may know Him, so our friends may know Him. Let us carry Christ with us this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.